Hello, my friends! Today you will learn how to play one of the best lucky heroes in Mobile Legends, Brody. But not on the surface level. If you invested 26 minutes and watched the whole guide, you will save yourself dozens of matches learning time. Let me know for which hero I should make a hero guide next, and the most upvoted comments will be considered. Plus, one lucky person even wins 100 diamonds for free. First, we enter the basic section before we move on to the pro and the build section. Passive. Brody is able to move while winding up his basic attack, while having a longer basic attack animation and slower attack speed bonus. Each basic attack deals 140% total physical attack and 45 times the hero's level physical damage. So up to 675 physical damage. Math genius, I know. The damage scaling with the level can't be critical. He gains 30% movement speed which decays over 1.2 seconds and afflicts one abyss mark on the enemy hero and minions, which is capped at 4 stacks. Each stack increases Brody damage to that target by 5% and his movement speed by 5% as well. This description could give you the same headache Brody is having all the time. Do you see me fucking laughing, my But it sounds more complicated than it actually is. Attack speed and crit items are not recommended for him, as he doesn't get the full benefit from them. One basic attack hurts like hell, especially in the late game. And he gains a lot of movement speed, which is nice to chase enemies. Easy, right? First skill. Brody launches a shockwave forward, dealing 150 to 550 plus 170 percent total physical attack physical damage. God, I sound like a robot. Slowing enemies by 30 percent for 1.2 seconds and applying one abyss mark on the enemy. Hey, For every enemy it hits, it deals 10% extra damage, 5% extra slow and an additional abyss mark. This is capped at 130% damage, 45% slow and 4 stacks. And the damage to minions is also lower on lower levels. The cooldown of this skill is very short at 4 seconds on all levels, so you can spam it around like there is no tomorrow. But before I talk in detail about how to use his skills to perfection, I will tell you how to use his other two skills first. Second skill. Brody dashes towards an enemy, dealing 200 to 350, plus 70% total physical attack physical damage to the target. Stuns the target for 0.8 seconds and applies one abyss mark. After hitting an enemy, he will jump away from the target again and gains 45% movement speed that decays over 1.2 seconds. The cooldown of this skill is 8 to 6 seconds, which is really nice as you can use it multiple times in a gank. This skill is your life insurance, as it can save your butt in many many situations. You can also use it very well as an engaging skill though, and even pass through walls. Huh? Ultimate! Brody targets all enemies in the circle area, dealing 340 to 580 plus 180 percent extra physical attack physical damage to all enemies. If the target has an abyss mark, all abyss marks will be reset and they gain an extra blast for each stack into their face. What do you mean by that? Each dealing physical damage equal to 136 to 232 plus 72 percent extra physical attack plus 4 to 6 percent of the enemy's lost HP. Meaning, the lower the enemy's HP is, the harder the extra shots will hit the enemy. The cooldown of it is 24 to 18 seconds, so don't be afraid to spam it around. Since the percentage damage is extra physical attack, you only increase it by building items with physical attack. And since his skills and basic attack hugely benefit from physical attack, it's smart to build items that massively increase your physical attack. I just finished 4 sentences with physical attack. Great sentence structure, Nico. Usually you're not building a full attack build on him though, as he lacks escape mechanisms and often deals enough damage with 2 to 3 attack items. That's why you usually use a hybrid build with a mix of attack and defensive items on him. But that's just general knowledge that you need to know to understand how you have to play him and we will talk about which exact items you have to use in the build section. Now we're firstly entering the pro section, where I explain you every little detail you need to know to instantly become a Brody Pro. Ok, instantly is a little bit over the top, but if you follow all my tips, you will at least feel like a pro after like 2 matches. Get your notebook out now. Tip 1. 
how to dominate on level 1. When your enemy is standing close to the minions like Melissa here, use your first skill and try to hit Melissa last to apply the max amount of stacks on her. Once you apply the full stacks, your damage will be significantly higher. And you can poke away your enemy so they miss out on the first wave already. Tip 2. Build the right items in the early game. Didn't you say we cover the items later? Yes, but this is crucial for your gameplay. Depending on who you're playing against, you should build steel leg plates as the first item. It gives you 45 physical defense after just one wave, which seriously lowers the incoming damage, which means you can be way more aggressive. You should definitely build it against Beatrix, Melissa, 1-1, Clint and Moscow. Cough. Oh my god, <laughs> what did I just say? And also when the enemy has physical burst heroes like Saber, Hayabusa or Natalia. If you're in doubt if you should build it or not, better build it as it's the safe option. Just don't build it when you go up against Nathan or Kimmy as they deal magic damage. There you need tough boots right away. Tip 3. How to kill your counterpart before level 4. It is fairly simple to kill or at least make your enemy retreat before you even got your ult. Make sure to poke the enemy until they have 50% or less of the HP left. Then engage with your first skill hitting minions and the enemy. Optional you can use flicker as it gives you a nice surprise effect. Then use your second skill to stun the enemy and finish them off with one or two basic attacks. If you can't kill the enemy at least make them retreat so they miss out on a lot of farm and you can get some sweet turret gold. So don't chase for a kill. Generally, don't chase for a kill when it's not safe. That counts for every hero. Tip 4. Keep an eye on the map. It is very easy getting so focused on the 1v1 fight that you forget that there are still other enemies that could try to gank you very early. Good enemies know that you are very strong in the early game, so they will prioritize to gank you early. Here I brought down Melissa to 15% of her HP, but if you look on the map, no enemy is visible on it. So in this situation I should walk back to the safety in case an enemy is rotating to my lane. Angela arrived with her full HP and since I already used my flicker and had less than 50% of my HP, I couldn't really escape anymore as b <laughs> what the Especially because I underestimated Angela's damage. Yeah, dying as a marksman in the early game is really really bad. So play it safe instead of being overconfident because of your damage. Tip 5. Last hit minions. This is a common tip every laner should do. Last hitting minions gives you a gold bonus, so you should always try to last hit them. You can use Brody's first skill very well for it, or use your basic attack, but remember the delay it has. Tip 6. How to play once you've reached level 4. Brody's ultimate is a huge game changer, as you can kill almost any enemy when they are below 30%. Here you can see how I kept applying stacks to Melissa to keep them at the max level. As I was still on level 3, Melissa felt safe. So I quickly killed the gold minion to reach level 4 and could instantly delete her. Bottom line is, bring the enemy below 30% HP, ult, you have slain an enemy. Christina is way better at that than me. Tip 7. Snowball. Unlike most other marksmen, Brody is very strong in the early to mid game, but falls off a bit in the late game as other DPS heroes can out damage him. So you have to make sure to snowball in the early game and finish the match as fast as you can. Snowballing means you gain an early advantage in resources and then use that advantage to continuously overpower and dominate the enemy team, which lets you increase your lead exponentially as the game progresses. In this match I have over 6000 gold, while the enemies Beatrix and Selina only have around 2500. So although both gank me together, they have absolutely no chance to defeat me, as they deal almost no damage while I can delete them in an instant. Because Brody is so strong in the early game, make sure to gather as many kills and farm as possible to achieve the snowball effect. If you play too passive you will waste this time to shine in the bush and have a very hard time in the late game. Now, how do you start to snowball? Tip 8. Manage your lane. One way is to simply kill your counterpart, but that's not always possible or even necessary. 
What you can do instead is freezing the lane. First you need to poke your enemy enough so they become so low that they have to retreat. What the dog doing? Then you just stand in a bush and watch how the minions beat the crap out of each other and only last hit the minions to gain the extra gold. Like this, your enemy is either forced to retreat which means they lose a lot of farm or they are trying to get close again which gives you a nice opportunity to kill them. Look at this dude. Once the enemy retreat or is dead, you can clear the wave to get some sweet turret gold, but make sure to not get ganked of course. Remember, watch the minimap. If the enemy minions run towards your turret, you can also just let them attack you right before they reach your turret like here. Because then you can move the minion battle closer to your turret. Which means your enemy have to get far away from their turret to farm. This makes it much easier for your team to gank that fagger. If you want to learn more of these advanced techniques that count for every hero, you should subscribe, as there will be a huge guide marathon with all kind of advanced techniques. Tip 9. Best combos. Generally you should apply 4 stacks on the enemy and lower the HP to 30% or less before activating your ult. As I said already, if you lower the enemy's HP to 20% though, 2 stacks are often enough. As you learned already you can use minions, but also creeps or tanks to apply more stacks. So do that to apply 4 stacks on as many enemies as possible and wait for the right moment to activate your ult. Here I activated my ult too early as I could also apply stacks on Beatrix to finish her off as well. Another good combo is to use flicker to engage or to escape first like here, first skill to apply as many marks on the enemy's backline, second skill for an additional mark and to position yourself, basic attacks until the enemy is low enough and boom, all them away. If anyone is left, use your first skill to slow them down and your basic attack to chase them to death if it's safe. Never die while chasing, that's embarrassing. If you wanna ambush an enemy, use your basic attack first, then your first skill as it has a much shorter delay than your basic attack, then your second skill to stun the enemy and give them no chance to escape and ult them to the moon. Save your ult though when it's not necessary to use it. Your basic attack deals an insane amount of damage, so it's not necessary to use your ult when you can kill a defenseless Angela like here. Tip 10. Your basic attack is unescapable. Once you've locked on your basic attack, the enemy can't escape it anymore, even when they move outside of your range. This you can use like here, where I move away from the turret's range because I wasn't sure if an enemy would jump on me. But also like here where Melissa flickered away. Just make sure she's also in your old range when you pop it. Ah, fuck it, flicker trick for the win. Boom. The same goes for your oldest way. Way? Well, once it's locked on there is no escape. Even after you died, it still fires. Tip 11. Use your flicker trick to destroy your enemies. I think many of you know the Brody flicker trick, especially from Benny QT who used it perfectly in the M4. Lower the enemy's HP as much as you can while applying stacks until the very last moment. Then when your enemies are out of your range, flicker towards them so they are in your old range and delete them from this world. Tip 12. Utilize your second skill to the maximum. Your second skill is the most important skill to master. You can use it to engage against the enemy, close the distance to them by using a minion for example or to ambush an enemy. You can even move through thin walls with it, so don't waste it to randomly clear minions and always have it ready when needed, especially because it's also your only escape skill. In higher ranks your enemies are smart enough to wait until you use it and then attack you because you're a sitting duck. Tip 13. Push 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 Since Brody's basic attack deals an insane amount of damage, he is a perfect hero to take down turrets. So if you stop hunting kills for once, push like there's no tomorrow. Like this you will win many 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 more games as you're supposed to destroy the ugly looking base of the enemy. What did I do? Just go to the office! What did I do? What Tip 14. Never use his ult to engage. I saw already many Brody players who just randomly yeet their ult into the enemy's face. Never ever do that. 
Without stacks, it's almost never a good idea to use your ult. Although that was a lie, there are good ways. But not to kill enemies. So always remember, to get kills you must... Step 1. Build up stacks. Step 2. Lowers the enemy's HP to around 30%. Step 3. Ult. Boom. Nothing else. Unless... Tip 15. Use your ult to finish low AF enemies. If you see an enemy running around with 10% of the HP, then you can blast your ult into the face without applying any stacks. You can also use the flicker ult trick here if the enemy is already under the turret, for example. Tip 16. Surprise, surprise motherfucker. motherfucker! There is also an additional combo that you can use to surprise squishy enemies. And especially if you manage to snowball. Use your flicker first to close the distance, then your second skill to stun the enemy and for the first mark, then your first for damage and another stack, and then ult right away. This instantly deletes a squishy enemy as they can't sustain your damage. And as a real surprise, surprise motherfucker, motherfucker moment, tip 17. Don't cancel your basic attack animation. While charging your basic attack, you can use your skills. This will interrupt your charging animation though, and you won't fire a basic attack. That means if you almost fully charge your basic attack, wait until it's done before using your skills. Otherwise, you will waste a lot of potential damage that you could deal. Tip 18. His ult has a low cooldown. Use that. His ult has a cooldown of 24 to 18 seconds, which is pretty low already. And it can be lowered even further with items that can reduce your CD time. So you can use your ult especially in the late game for many more things than just kills. You can check bushes with it as you can see when you hit enemies in a bush or you can use it to clear a wave if you quickly want to push or if you plan to recall anyway. Tip 19. Position yourself right in a gank. In a gank Brody needs to get quite close to an enemy to apply his stacks. This means you have to be extra careful around burst heroes as they can, well, burst you down. <laughs> Never jump in first and this is your frontliner's job. Once they engaged, make sure to land your first skill in a way that the enemy's backline heroes received a nice dose of marks. Then it's time for your ult. Again, don't use it too early, but also not too late. After some matches, you will get a good feeling for it when to use it and when not. If your frontliners are not doing the job though, because, well, you play in solo queue with headless chickens, don't try to force anything that could result in your own death. Because feeding the enemy is the last thing you wanna do. I'm joking! No, stop! 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 Tip 20. What to do after you broke your first turret. If you followed all the tips I gave you until now, you should always be able to break the first turret on your lane while you're still standing. Once this happens, make sure to rotate mid to get more fun there and potentially break the first turret there as well. But still, make sure to always clear your wave as well. This enables you to snowball even further. If you have the chance, break the second turret as well. This allows you to roam around completely free even to the other side of the map. In higher ranks, you can also swap lanes once you broke the enemy's first turret, as Brody can keep up against most XP laners. Little extra tip, if you have had this second ally that picked a second MM, just adjust and go to the XP lane or even to the mid lane, as Brody can still perform pretty well in both lanes. Tip 21. How to play in the late game. In the late game, the tables turns and many marksmen can outdamage you in a 1v1. So avoid getting into a 1v1 with them and make sure to gank together with your team. Brody is especially strong in ganks when you position yourself right. So make sure to utilize his strength. Always help to get the Lord as you probably deal the most damage to him and split push when you have the chance. You need to end the game as fast as you can because you need to keep your farm advantage to stay on the top of the enemy. In a level outfield you will have a much harder time. What the hell? Tip 22. Counters and weaknesses. Since you're a marksman, many burst heroes will work very well against him. While he can survive the attacks from Natalia, Lancelot, Ling or Joy easily thanks to his hybrid build and his second skill I just became out of breath, awesome, he has huge problems when it comes to lock on burst heroes as he is already dead before he could even use his second skill. These heroes include assassins like Saber, Harley, Aemon and Gushen, or mages like Eudora. 
Burst heroes who have stuns also work very well against him. For example, Vale and Kadita. Talking about stuns, as Brody has no instant escape skill, he's often having a hard time dodging hard CC skills. Franco, Kufra, Minty and Atlas can easily stop him and Moskov can easily stun him and burst him down. Also again, many late game DPS heroes outdamage you even with a hybrid build. So no one we want against them. Now let's move on to the last section. Builds, emblems and spells. As already mentioned, you can build defensive items on him. So let's talk about every item you could build and why. That's way more effective than just copying a build, so stick with me. As already mentioned, you should build steel leg plates against strong marksmen or when the enemy has physical damage assassins. You could also go for dreadnought armor first though, if your enemy deal physical damage with steel no, skills. God, I can't speak anymore. <laughs> as it reduces the enemy's physical attack by up to 15% and gives you 40 physical defense. It's a little bit more expensive than steel leg plates though. When you face Clint on the lane and the enemy's assassin is a Saber or Hayabusa, you should get this item first. If you want to go for damage first though, build Fury Hammer and it gives you 35 physical attack and plus 12 physical penetration, which massively increases your damage in the early game. If you face a magic damage dealer on the lane, get tough boots right away and magic wizard's cloak as the very first item. Once you build your first item, get your normal boots for some movement speed but don't finish the boots yet. You should go for your first core item now, which depends on your preference. Many players build Blade of the Heptasies as it gives you a lot of damage for a cheap price. And since Fury Hammer is part of that build, it theoretically makes sense to upgrade it. If you want to go for a full damage build, it should definitely be part of your build. However, if you go for a hybrid build, I would rather recommend to go for Blade of the Despair as it massively boosts your damage, which you need when you're not going for a full damage build. Plus it increases your damage to an enemy that has 50% or less HP, which matches perfectly with your ult. You could also go for Malefic Roar as first core item. Yeah really, I'm not joking. If the enemy MM is building steel leg plates and the enemy's jungler is a tanky hero, Malefic Roars and BOD's damage is almost the same to that enemy. But Malefic Roar is 950 gold cheaper, which is why you should prioritize it. As second items, you should always go for Malefic Roar unless the enemy builds no physical defense items because they picked three MMs for example or whatever. Then you rather build Wind of Nature as it's a great attack item against physical damage dealers. It lets you become immune to all physical damage for 2 seconds, which is a real lifesaver and can give you enough time to apply your stacks to then blast your enemies away. If your enemy has many tanky enemies though, you should consider building Demon Hunter Sword. DHS lets you shred 8% of the enemy's current HP with a single basic attack away, gives you a bit of lifesteal and attack speed, which is a nice benefit as it increases your DPS and it works perfectly together with Malefic War, which lets you become a tank killer. In a damage build, you should also include Hunter Strike. It gives you 15 physical penetration and 80 physical attack, which increases your damage by a lot. And its passive gives you 50% movement speed after hitting the same enemy 5 times, which you will always do thanks to you all. This effect is perfect to either chase enemies that survive your blast or to disengage when you use your skills. These are all attack items that are recommended to build. Now let's talk about defense items. Immortality is the standard defensive item many marksmen are getting simply because it gives you an extra life in the late game which is often a game changer. Once you use its passive, throw it into the trash though as the base stats are rubbish. Brute Force Bristplate is a nice item that gives you up to 50 physical and 20 magic defense, 600 HP, 10% movement speed and 10% cooldown reduction. Although Brody skills have already a very short cooldown and even lower cooldown is always nice for more DPS. If you don't know what DPS is by the way, damage per second. If you go up against magic burst heroes, Athena shield is a must of course and radiant armor against DPS mages. In case you face multiple magic damage enemies, build both for maximum protection. If you face multiple enemies who deal physical damage with skills, build dreadnought armor big brother anti Kuras. It lowers the enemy's physical attack up to 24% when hitting you with a skill and gives you enough physical defense and HP to even survive an attack from Saber. And against DPS 
DPS and heal heroes, you should build Dominance Ice Cream. That's it for the hybrid build. Now, if you want to go for a full tank build, your first item should be Thunder Belt. It gives you 800 HP, mana regen, 40 physical defense, and 10% CD reduction. Plus, it passive lets you deal true damage with a basic attack after you use the skill. The true damage becomes higher with your extra HP, which is why you should include Guardian Helmet into your tank build. Plus, it lets you regen your HP so you never have to recall. Other than that, you should build Malefic Roar a second item as it lets you deal much more damage. And the other defensive items are depending on the enemy's lineup. So here's a list of all items that you can include in your build. For anyone who skipped here, you should really watch my explanation why you should use these items. As emblem, you should use the Assassin emblem with Killing Spree or the Marksman emblem with Weapon Master in case you go for a damage build. As spelled, you should always use Flicker. Now let me know which hero I should cover in the next hero guide and watch this video where I show you three very fun roamers. Just in case you get an ally who picks a Marksman no matter what. See you over there!